Hello, my name is Sam Reynolds. I was in the 2016 cohort of the BBSRC DTP at Cambridge. Uh, I did my PhD within the Aquatic Ecology Group in the Zoology Department, and I'm now a postdoctoral researcher in that same group. So how did I choose my PIPs? Uh, the PIPs is a really unique opportunity to do something that you'd never be able to do otherwise. Um, and so therefore I really wanted to use my PIPs to do something that I hadn't done before and I had no experience in and that I thought would be really valuable to my uh, future career. Um, and for me, that was documentary making. Uh, I love documentaries, but I have no camera skills. I don't have any editing skills. And so all I can really offer a production company would be my commitment and my ability to be able to research topics and pull out key pieces of information. Um, so an opportunity to came up to work with a production company called Newtopia, who are based in London. And they produce documentaries uh, with companies such as Disney and National Geographic. And they have had PIP students in the past, and they sent out an email to current BBSRC uh, students advertising the position. Uh, I applied, I had an interview, and ultimately was offered the role. And so I was a researcher for a new high budget documentary series, which is looking at the natural world and various biological and geographical and cultural phenomenon uh, occurring the world over. Um, it features National Geographic explorers and the documentary series is fronted by Will Smith, as in the actual Will Smith. Um, and the series is called Welcome to Earth. Um, and it's gonna be streaming on Disney Plus from December, 2021. So what was my project about? So during my PIPs, I worked across multiple different episodes um, and each episode had its own director, producer and team of researchers. And my role consisted of a few things, including using my biology background to help guide certain sequences, um, to find and research new interesting stories that could be included in the documentary, um, write and fact check scripts, um, and find people to collaborate with to enable us to film and capture what we wanted to show in the documentary. Um, and this meant working closely with directors and producers and other researchers within the company, but also with external collaborators such as academics uh, and organisations and fixers based in countries and areas that we wanted to film, ultimately film in. Um, I brought value to the team as much of the initial research would involve organising meetings with and talking to prominent academics and research scientists to discuss the feasibility of our ideas and how we'd be able to capture our ideas um, visually. We would also be talking to people on the ground in the countries we would wanted to be filming in uh, to help us understand certain constraints, find people who would be able to help us locate the animals we wanted to film, or knew where the animals would be exhibiting certain behaviours, or knew how to access remote areas that uh, we wanted to visit. So how did I find working within a professional environment? Um, having worked in a professional context prior to my PhD, it was a welcome return to the professional environment. Um, when you're working on your PhD, almost all the problems you encounter are framed as, how am I going to solve this issue? Whereas in a work environment, more often than not, it's how are we going to solve this problem? And working in a collaborative team environment with lots of other people, working towards a shared goal, was a real nice change of pace from PhD life. Um, the day-to-day -day work would involve lots of applied stuff, such as reading papers, watching videos, talking to scientists, looking at maps, learning about new animal behaviours or lesser known uh, cultural events. Um, and also working on more creative and conceptual questions like how do we capture this idea visually um, and intuitively convey an idea or concept without a voiceover telling you what you're seeing? Or how do we link these narrative and film ideas to create a compelling overarching story? Um, which is a lot of fun, um, usually sitting around the office just bouncing ideas off each other. So I'm going to speak a bit about some of the experiences that I had on my PIPs and how I can apply these um, to my academic research. And so working on the project at Newtopia really made me think differently about collaboration and impact. So in terms of collaboration, we work with lots of scientists filming things from uh, fungi growth to starfish larvae movement. And 
because of the sophisticated kind of macro lens cameras and high definition, high frame rate equipment that we had available, we helped these labs see behaviors and patterns and details that they'd never been able to see before. And that was hugely exciting for us because we got to put these things in our documentary, but it was hugely exciting for the lab because they've been working on these things for decades and never seen these kind of behaviors before. Um, and I think as scientists who would rarely think to collaborate with people outside of academia, um, but going through this experience made me realize that there's a lot of value in doing so. So with regards to impact, it made me realize that the impact of your research goes far beyond just producing academic papers. Um, and of course, fundamental peer-reviewed research is really important. Um, but for enacting kind of social awareness and social change, um, for example, like the wider public didn't become acutely aware of the impact of plastics on our environment because they read it in a paper in an academic journal. Um, it's because David Attenborough's documentary series visually demonstrated the impact that we're having on our planet. And the power of engaging and visual storytelling is really important. And the reach of these popular and visually stunning documentaries extend far beyond the reach uh, of academia. So helping to produce something on this scale, which will be seen by millions of people and ensuring that the science it communicates uh, is accurate and reflective of the current scientific opinion could potentially be the most scientific impact that I'll have during my career. Um, but it also demonstrates that there are ways of making an impact outside of our research and academia. And all of us undertaking our PhDs have gained these skills to uh, fundamentally understand research. Um, and we can use this skill to help other people understand it as well. So lastly, I'm just gonna cover some advice for people looking to undertake their PIPs. And um, so firstly, try and realize that the PIPs is not a tick box exercise to complete or a barrier between you being in a lab and getting on with your research. It's an opportunity to get involved with a project or an organization in a capacity that you would never be able to under normal circumstances. There is no way that I would be able to apply to Utopia as a random person off the street with no TV experience and expect them to let me work on one of their biggest nature documentary series. It's just unrealistic. Um, being at Cambridge and having this funded opportunity through the BBSRC PIP scheme allows these organisations to take a risk on you as they don't need to worry about the legalities of unpaid interns or covering your expenses as it's all handled by the BBSRC. Um, it's a win for them because they get to have for you for free for three months and it's a win for you because you get access to a new area or environment where you can gain experience but more importantly connections um, that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. I'd also try and be clear in your mind about what you want to get out of the pips. It's a perfect opportunity to try something completely new or try something that you're considering as a future career. It's often advised that you do your pips earlier rather than later. However, I did my pips towards the end of my PhD and I was absolutely fine. It really just depends on the kind of research that you're doing. And additionally, all the contacts that I made were still in the same roles when I finished my PhD and they offered me a position to come and do work for them when I finished. Whereas if you do your, your pips right at the beginning of your PhD, two or three years later, the people you made contact with might have moved to other companies or changed positions. Um, but ultimately, the PIPS is an opportunity that shouldn't be wasted because it's an opportunity that you won't have again and you really need to kind of maximise this opportunity that's been given to you.